Okay, well, let's get started. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Mark Bistavros. I am a senior software engineer at Red Hat, um, and I work on Enterprise Contract, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, let's get started. Um, I figure, uh, you know, people in the room might not know uh, this supply chain security concept in general, so uh, we'll, we'll just do a little brief introduction. What is a supply chain attack, first of all? Um, well, according to CISA, U.S. government agency, uh, it's, it's when a cyber threat actor infiltrates a software vendor's network and employs malicious code to compromise the software before the vendor sends it to their customers. So what does that mean? Well, a, you know, a, a, a producer, a vendor of software, so uh, somebody that sells software, or uh, a dependency, perhaps. Um, if a malicious actor compromises that, uh, that uh, vendor's uh, software, and then that software goes and gets uh, put into some other consumer's uh, supply chain, uh, then that vulnerability will also exist in, in the downstream consumer's uh, in, in the downstream consumer software, which means that the original threat actor can then go and attack uh, the consumer, um, and that can be pretty bad. Um, the canonical example, of course, is uh, SolarWinds, which some people here aren't too familiar with. It happened in late 2020, um, and what happened was more or less exactly uh, what uh, we what I just described, which is that some threat actor uh, managed to infiltrate SolarWinds and sneak a backdoor into their software. And SolarWinds uh, was you know a U.S. government contractor, and the U.S. government had a bunch of computers that used SolarWinds. Um, and so when SolarWinds uh, performed a routine software update, and all these uh, computers running uh, SolarWinds uh, got the, got this update, they also received a backdoor, um, which. Uh, allowed the original threat actor to then compromise the computers and produce the largest U.S. Breach, largest uh, data breach in U.S. government history, which is pretty bad and served as a bit of a wake-up call that we should probably be doing something about this. Um, so what's the solution? Well, it turns out it's actually pretty well understood. It's signing. It's 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 a uh, it's cryptographic signing. If you've ever used like PGP or you've seen PGP signatures on a, like a software download, that's that's what that is. Um, uh, so signing a digital artifact, so like a file or you know application or something, it provides cryptographic assurances that the artifact came from the entity that signed it. So, you know, the, the, the person that performed the signing action, that is who, uh, that, that, that is who it's coming from. And also, crucially, it uh, indicates that it hasn't changed from the time that it was signed. This is important, those guarantees are important because they begin to help ensure um, provenance guarantees. So that you can kind of know that software came from uh, a particular uh, uh, source. Um, and this is great, but the issue is that up until fairly recently, uh, signing was pretty hard. You know, it was, it was, you know, tricky. You had to manage your own keys, your own certificates, and that all adds a lot of burden that some, uh, that, that really a lot of uh, developers probably didn't want to deal with. So it would probably be something that would be done for larger software vendors, like, you know, say Red Hat, for example. Um, but it wasn't as widespread as it needed to be. Because if we really want to improve the supply chain security of the ecosystem, it has to be widespread and everybody has to be using it. And so that's where Sigstore comes in. Sigstore uh, came into the scene late 2020, early 2021. Um, and its goal was really just to make signing as easy as possible, as accessible as possible. Um, and by a large, it succeeded. It introduced um, a suite of uh, pretty well-designed software tools, I would say. Um, and it, it's been pretty successful. It has a lot of adoption across the industry, a lot of collaboration from, from partners. Um, and I, Sigstore is awesome. I love Sigstore. But today we're really going to focus on Cosign, which is really just the signing aspect of it. Cosign is a CLI tool. And really, in a nutshell, what it allows you to do is run a single command that will sign something, and that, that will be it. And then you can verify that with just a single command as well, which is great. And you'll see that in action a little bit later during my demo. Um, in parallel, um, right as this kind of revolution in, in software supply chain security was happening, uh, Salsa was also being developed, and, and that stands for Supply Chain Levels for Software Artifacts. And this is basically just like a set of guidelines, a set of rules uh, that basically describe best practices and, and just things that sh you should conform to in order to have secure, secure software against supply chain attacks. Um, it's leveled, so you know higher levels indicate higher levels of security and higher requirements. Um, so like build level one might just be you know signatures alone. Build level two means you also have to sign your provenance, um, and just generally the requirements get get higher and higher. Um, it also introduced the concept of attestations, which is basically signing the metadata about uh, your build, 
um, as well to make sure that you know that also hasn't changed and it is what was expected um, as as uh, like throughout the chain basically. Um, and that leads us into Conflux. And Conflux is, uh, by its own words, an open source cloud native software factory focused on su software supply chain security. So, what, is Confl what does that mean? It is basically uh, a build system. It's a build system that's based on Tecton Chains, which is another technology that came about around this kind of time of you know, big innovation in supply chain security space. Um, and what it does is it, it, it's a build system, but it takes every single step of the process and it records and performs all the steps necessary to have supply chain you know, data that you can verify later. So it does signatures, it, it creates attestations, it signs those attestations for every single step of the process, um, which is great. That, that means that you can then go back later and verify that things happened in your build the way you wanted. Um, that finally leads us to enterprise contract, uh, which is what I work on and what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, so enterprise contract kind of sits at the end of the con of the of the conflux pipeline. It acts as uh, kind of like the final check. It verifies all those signatures, all that metadata, the attestations that I was talking about earlier that are produced by conflux, um, and it will do that in a uh, in a declarative way. So you can provide a policy uh, in in the form of a file that will decide what you know checks you want to run, um, and it. Uh, will perform this in, in the con context of Conflux, what it'll do is it'll, it'll happen at the end. So it'll gate release it. So like after a build happens in Conflux and all the metadata has been produced, we'll run a check. We'll tell you if it's good or not based on whatever checks you decide to, 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 to run. And if it looks good, you'll get a thumbs up and you can go on to the release process. If not, we'll block it. And then you'll know that something is wrong, either something you did wrong or even worse, there's potentially some security risk and that's something you should be looking at. Um, we also uh, uh, have, we're also integrated into a pull request CI. So if somebody's interested in your code, we'll run an we'll run enterprise contract and you can uh, decide, you can see if uh, that code will introduce risks uh, based on that same set of policies. Um, so that's enterprise contract and we are going to see what it looks like in a demo. So let's head over to my terminal. Um, can everybody see this okay? Should I zoom in a little bit? I'll zoom in a touch. Cool. Um, Let's run it. Um, so uh, for this demo, I'm gonna be using a few different images. Um, the one we're gonna use first is something called EC Golden Image. This is, pr this is interesting because it's actually uh, built in Conflux. So um, like I said, it, it, it has gone through a build process that produces all those attestations and signatures that are super important. Um, so that's what we'll be using uh, to uh, demonstrate everything. Um, so, and in the context of Conflux, uh, signing happens with a public-private key pair, and the public key is just well known, so I'm gonna store that on disk in this cosigned above key. It is a cosigned key, and more generally, I'll note now that um, both cosign and enterprise contract, enterprise contract uses the same like uh, signing verifi and verification libraries as cosign does. Um, so, we've got the key, and first what we're gonna do is we're just gonna show how this looks with cosign. Like I mentioned, this is a sig store tool, it's, uh, you know, sort of an upstream, you could say. Um, and it's, uh, we're just gonna do this big, long uh, command that will verify. We're gonna do cosign verify, we're gonna provide the key, we're gonna provide our image, which is here, this long slug. Um, and we're gonna ignore the transparency log for now because, uh, uh, so SigStore has a bunch of different tools, but for now we really just care about the signature, so we're, going, we're not going to deal with the transparency log for now. Um, and we see that this actually did succeed. So the cosine claims are validated, the signatures are verified against the specified public key. You can see the two signatures that were verified. This is great. You can also use cosine to verify salsa attestations. Um, so you can do verify attestation, type salsa provenance. Uh, you provide the key, provide the image. Um, same in secure ignore key log. And we see that that also succeeded. Cosine claims are validated and the signatures are verified against the specified public key. And, but what was verified? Um, it was actually an in toto statement. This is basically an attestation, like I was saying uh, before. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's cosine, and it, that works pretty well. Um, now let's see what we can do with EC. Um, EC can do the same uh, verification job that, uh, that cosine uh, just did, um, and that's what we're gonna show right now. But it can do quite a bit more, and we're, we're gonna see uh, the cool things that it can do a little bit later. But for now, um, we're going to do EC validate image. Um, we are not gonna provide a policy right now because uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll see why. Um, we'll provide the public key as well and the image, uh, and we'll uh, do it in text output. Um, and if we run this, what we'll get at the end is going to be a nicely formatted text report that shows uh, what uh, tests were run and whether they succeeded. And fortunately for us, they all did, which is awesome. Um, so even with no policy, uh, Enterprise Contract will always perform uh, a few built-in checks, notably uh, a signature check on the attestations and uh, images. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, I have a policy that I have written. Um, and we can provide this enterprise contract to do a little deeper verification. Um, so for one thing, I put the public key in here just for convenience. We don't need to provide that separately now. Um, but crucially also, you can see down here, uh, salsa source version controlled. Now this is a rule set that is provided by enterprise contract that is built in. Um, so, and what it does is it will enforce requirements that will uh, that conform to the subsection of the salsa provenance requirements for source version control. So what that means is if you have any sort of links or, or pointers in your attestations or in your images, they should be Git, because you know Git is effectively source control. Um, so that's what the salsa, that salsa requirement means, and Enterprise Contract can check that for you. Um, what it will do is we'll, we'll provide the policy, um, and we will run that same big command. Uh, we're going to show successes just to make sure this is uh, quite verbose. We can read all about it. Um, might take a little bit, but once it, oh, let's see, there it is. It succeeded. Um, you'll see that we got six successes. And in, in addition to those built-in checks that I mentioned earlier, we also have a uh, salsa source version controlled. And we have a few different individual checks um, that we ran that are part of that individual, uh, that policy uh, source group. Um, material non-get URI, you can actually read the description for it. Each entry in the predicate.materials array of the attestation uses a get URI. So anything within the attestation should be using a get URI. We've checked that. That's a check that succeeded. That's great. Similar for all the others. And I've been using uh, these text reports, and they're very nice and readable, which is great. Um, but uh, Enterprise Contract produces a very rich report that has a lot of different detail. And I'm just going to run the same command we just did, but with a YAML report, so you can see the depth of detail that gets, that gets reported, um, just for completeness' sake. Um, it won't be quite as readable, um, but you can see that there's a policy configuration here. You can see that it succeeded, ultimately, which is great. Um, and you can see all the checks that were run, uh, the collections they're a part of, uh, again, the description, title, whether they pass, which is great, and also the uh, image and all the keys and signatures that are uh, part of the check. Um, yes? Sorry, one, one more time. Yeah. That is a good question. Uh, Yes. Uh, so the question was uh, w for the uh, Git checks. Uh, does it actually go to the Git URL and slurp it down and, and check that, or no? Um, I don't think it does. Uh, Louis can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it does not. There you go. Yep. There you go. So uh, there's your answer. Um, but yeah. So this is this is what a YAML report looks like. You get a lot of detail in here. Um, and yeah, let's keep moving. Um, the other thing that uh, Enterprise Contract can do that's pretty cool is it can do it across multiple image references. So I have a components.yaml file here. Now this has multiple container images. Um, they're all EC golden image, but they could very well be different ones. Um, notably, they're different hashes, so they are distinct images. Um, this could be useful in perhaps a Kubernetes context. Maybe you have a bunch of different images, um, and you want them all enforced against the same uh, policy, which could also be stored as a Kubernetes resource. So it's, you know, the policy is a file. It can be it can be stored as such. It can be uh, managed like any other you know Git artifact. Um, so in order to verify multiple, we're going to do EC validate image. Uh, we're going to provide that same policy. We're going to provide instead of a single image and a big uh, slug, we're going to do components.yaml. We're going to have our output as text and all the other good stuff. And this will provide this will create a quite long report uh, that should have many more checks and more successes. Um, yeah, it should run 
uh, again, that policy we had, uh, salsa source version control and, um, and just the built-ins. Uh, and it should run it for all three. Should be fine. It, th this does take a while because it's running three separate checks. Um, uh, yeah, what else are we going to do today? Uh, I have uh, another, I have some more stuff after this. And okay. Any questions while we're waiting? Yes. 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 Yeah. So the question was, uh, how much trust do you get with just plain old cosine versus this? Um, so with cosine, you would need to trust, you know, the signatures. Um, and depending on how much of the signature infrastructure you're using, that might improve, you know, the guarantees. Um, with enterprise contract, you are really running the same checks, but you can also run more. You know, where I, one thing actually, I should just probably do this now. Um, one thing that uh, Enterprise Contract does is it has a lot of built-in policies, and they they perform a broad set of checks that go far beyond what you can do with just plain cosine. So, for example, um, source version control. These were the policies we were enforcing uh, earlier, but we have tons more, like TCP CVE checks, base image checks. Um, we can uh, perform S bomb checks and all this other stuff. We can run a lot more checks uh, that are you know that might provide additional guarantees that you wouldn't get with plain old cosine. Yes, yes, it, it does the signing. Sorry, yes, yes. No, yeah, it's good. Um, so uh, yes, cosine does uh, just signing and verifying. That's, that was a question. I'm really not sure why this isn't working. But uh, yes, question. Well, you, you definitely don't get confidence. Let's start over. Hold on. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I just I'm still nibbling at this because like I read your blog and I didn't quite grok it, and then I listened to this and I still don't quite grok it all the way. Um. So like if you attack this from a confidentiality, availability, integrity, and yes. non-repudiation perspective, like standard four computer security things, like what do I not get with cosine, and then what do I get? Like like give me an an attack vector that would get through one of those four things. Yes. One way, but not the other way. Does yeah. that make sense? Like, just an example. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, I, I would need to give that question some thought. I, I don't know that I can give a good answer uh, right at this moment. But, um, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> I think if you set your policy to check that there are no CVEs, Louis, you can yeah. ask. You can probably add to this, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the the way I look at it is so the when you use enterprise contract, you can do a very uh, advanced inspection on the image and on the attestation, all the signatures, and you can sort of like cross reference everything if you wanted to. So the the quality of the checks you can perform is uh, uh, related to the quality of information that's recorded about the build. Um, so cosine uh, will allow you to perform these checks, but when you look at it from an enterprise perspective, you want to have a way to codify like what does it mean for an image to be ready to be shipped, right? And you want to codify that at like an organization level. So enterprise contract kind of wraps that workflow into this thing that you can say, okay, this is my policy. Apply this to every image going out the door, right? So a if you, enterprise contract, the way it started was just some bash scripts around cosine. Uh, and eventually we ended up having to add so many new features to support these different use cases that we're like, all right, we gotta rewrite this in, in, in Go or any whatever language um, and actually just use cosine as a library and then tie things in that way. Um, so I think if you were to, if you have enough time to hack, you could do everything with cosine blank, right? But 
the yeah Yeah, I assume from like an integrity perspective, there would be some way that if I'm only verifying, maybe somebody could still get in and sneak something in. But then if I'm doing these extra checks, they won't be able to sneak something in, right? Like that's basically what I'm thinking. Yeah, so I think the that check is done at the cosign level. What enterprise contract brings additionally is that you can um, enforce things like how was this container image built? And maybe you know it, had, it has a valid signature, it has a valid source of provenance, but the way that it was built, it maybe used a task that hasn't been vetted. So we can enterprise contract can go and say, okay, based on the policies and the, you know the data that I have, this is not okay. You know, do you know what I mean? Does that make things simpler? Maybe we can take this after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could do that also without EC. Like you could write your own um, policy rule checker that would do the things that EC does. But EC just takes care of it all for you. And there's one more thing I'll add that um, we find part of the value proposition is we so those policy URLs there, let the um, policy management be UDOPSY. UDOPS so we can now have that managed across the company, across different teams, all through um, a Git style workflow. So it means it's, you know, it's auditable and manageable in that way. And that's quite neat. And yeah, you could build that as well, but you would have to put all these pieces together that EC does or could do for you. So at this point, I'll let you decide if you want to answer this yeah. now or in the hallway. Because yeah. you probably this have some is, more. This, part that was of your a great question. Because uh, you've you, only got a, a few and more. Simon for for providing a little more detail. Um, I'll probably finish my demo, and then if anybody else has questions, we can we can address those. Um, yeah. Well, I I control seed it, so it didn't finish unfortunately. But um, we'll move on. You have to you have to believe me when I say that it would have been a very long report with a lot of successes that would have been across all three of those images. Um, so what we're going to do next, um, enterprise contract is not just limited to, to you know, conflict. It can do a lot of, it, it, can, it, it can be pretty generalizable. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at an image that is produced using GitHub Actions and signed uh, with uh, cosign Helis. Now what this uh, workflow does is uh, on GitHub, if you use this workflow cosign Helis, um, GitHub will basically, prov it, will, it will kind of retrofit the the yeah, the certificate that is used for signing, and we'll basically attach a bunch of metadata onto that certificate that you can use to verify later on. Um, an enterprise contract can verify those things. Um, this image uh, is Festoji. This was made by Louis. Uh, thank you, Louis. Um, and we are going to use it with EC. We're going to use a blank policy for now. Uh, we're going to use the image. We're going to provide inline, we're going to provide a, a regex for uh, the certificate identity, which uh, will basically indicate that it was signed helessly using, uh, using cosign. And we can also check that the OIDC issuer is in fact GitHub. Um, if we do this, uh, we should see a report. Um, and I did do this in YAML format because uh, it was quite interesting to see the full details of uh, like how the certificate was run, uh, like, like what's present in the certificate. Um, Hopefully this one works. Um, yeah. Do we even have Wi-Fi? Oh yeah, fantastic, it worked. Cool. Um, so we can see, if we scroll up, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, but we have you know, our, our certificates and stuff. But notably, we also have metadata that uh, has a lot of stuff like the workflow name, package, uh, the repository that triggered it, so Alcarva slash Festoji. Uh, the SHA that triggered us, this is the commit that was, you know, at the very end of the history when, when, when the image was built. Um, and the, like, the trigger that, ha that uh, triggered it, which was push. Um, so this is all really useful information. Enterprise contract can check those things. Um, I have another policy, policy github.yaml. If you look at that, um, in addition to, uh, we, can, we can put in, you know, the regex for the, for that, uh, for the, for the, for the subject and also just check the issuer. Those are things we can put in, in there. Um, as part of the policy, we can also add uh, some rule data for, for example, what's allowed values for 
what's in that certificate. So the ref that triggered it, ref's heads master, the uh, trigger that triggered it is push. So we're going to add that in our policy, and you know, if the image conforms with those uh, with with those values, then it should pass. Um, GitHub certificate is is the rule set that we're that we're that we're working with. Um, I'm going to provide that policy um, along with the image, and hopefully, it'll run in a timely fashion, and we should see uh, some successes that. Uh, conform to these additional rules. Yep, there we go. It did indeed succeed. Um, and we got a bunch of passes, not only from the built-in uh, attestation and image checks, but also uh, from, for example, the workflow name uh, that passed, the uh, trigger passed, uh, all that stuff passed. Um, but this is also a good opportunity to demonstrate uh, what happens when things are a little wrong. I also have another policy that, that I've tweaked just slightly. Um, and hope, and we can use this to see uh, what happens when a policy fails. Because what I've done, and I actually have this in my editor here. Uh, here it is. So what I did is, uh, this is this is the original one. This is the one that that uh, succeeded. You'll see that there is allowed GitHub workflow triggers push, um, but I've changed that to pull, which I don't think is even an event. I don't know if that actually is a valid GitHub event, but it's a string. And that uh, that uh, run worked, but it failed. What is that? Oh, there's a violation here. What is the violation? Reason: trigger push and not an allowed list. Pull. The reason for that is, um, well, we changed the policy. Um, we we the policy specified that it had to be pull, but the image had push, so that caused a failure, and that's what a failure would look like. It'll give you a description and possibly some, uh, you know. Uh, rationale for it and how you can fix it, um, which is uh, handy. Uh, now, uh, how much time do we have left? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. I think we can do this quick. Um, now, the enterprise contracts, all those rules that you can configure, they're all actually uh, written in a language called Rego, which is part of the open policy agent, and that is uh, it's basically just like a rule language. Um, but what's cool is enterprise contract, you can bring your own rules. So I actually have a custom rule that I wrote here. Um, and what's the, what, basically what it's saying is uh, deny, so don't, don't succeed, if uh, in the attestations uh, there is a material that uh, does not match this uh, git slug, basically. Uh, which is very tailored. You know, that's really only going to work for this one image, but it will work for this image because that's that's the URL. But for any other image, it would fail. If we want to add this rule to our enterprise uh, contract run, we need we need to just add it to our policy. So this is the same policy that I had from before with the same you know rule data, but I'm also adding uh, a new policy source group down here and an additional rule, GitHub Salsa provenance, and that is what we wrote. Um, so, if I add this in and we run this, we should see that if it runs, we should see that uh, when it succeeds, uh, there will be a, yep, there we go, um, there will be, there it is, our new custom rule for Festoji uh, was included and succeeded. Fantastic. Um, and that's my demo. Um, I'll go back to my slides. Um, so Enterprise Contract is an open source project, obviously. Uh, we uh, would love to have you involved if you, if you would like to, to learn more about us. Uh, our website is on the QR code up there. Uh, we have docs there. We have community meetings every Wednesday, uh, when this morning uh, happened. Um, and yeah, that's my talk. Thank you very much. Okay, since I'm the moderator and I get to hold the mic, I get to ask the first question. Cool. What did you just show us? Are you are building an image, yes. putting it on Quay, and then the analysis is against that image? Yes. So and, and so basically you're analyzing the image, and the image build has to be getting content from the places you want it to get it from with the signatures you want it to see. Yes, we're, we're, we're expecting that uh, the images that you're verifying have these, uh, this you know, information, the, 
the, the signatures and the attestations, and we're expecting that that was done as part of the build process. So how do you analyze yeah. stuff that's not built into an image, or don't you? It's all got to be built into an image. Um, well, in the image case, uh, that is that is kind of what we're we're. Do you guys have anything to add? You want to add? Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It's. I mean, so in the image case, that is kind of our expectation. Um, I don't know. Do do we? Yeah. Yes. Uh, enterprise contract is. The main use case is to verify, validate uh, container images. But I just wanted to drop a note that nowadays everything ends up in a container registry. Yeah. Like RHEL itself is ending up yeah. there. Uh, OCR artifacts is you can put anything in there. So, um, and it becomes a, an interesting way of consolidating your storage solutions if you're an enterprise or whatnot. From the perspective of a developer, I, I want to get something approved to move it forward. So I build it into an image and then run these tools against that image. And my build of that image and all the signatures required as part of that build and where it's getting the content out of Git and all that, all the signatures applied, that's another talk that I'd like to see. Yeah. How does that all glue together so I can build my image and get all the things I need? I'm thinking of what do I need to do as a developer to make this work? Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, the answer is you, you, you run it with Conflux. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, build, you build your code with Conflux, it takes all, all care of it for you. The, this enterprise contract is the tool that makes sure these checks run at the end. Yes? One dumb question. So like when Conflux builds, it puts the container image in a registry and it puts a bunch of stuff in SIG store, right? The attestations yes. and the signatures. Or essentially. Is that the way to think of it? The, the signatures and attestations, they live alongside the image in the same repo. Yes. Oh, okay. It's in the OCI registry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the OCI... Sorry, the SIG store infrastructure that people usually rely on is the ReCore piece of it, the transparency yeah. log. So if you're using, there's a way to adopt SIG store incrementally. So the most basic level is uh, with the first demo that uh, signing. Uh, yeah. It was just like you have a long live key, so you still have to manage the keys, uh, but you don't re require like a transparency log or anything like that, Falsio or anything like that, and the the full-on adoption is like the last example where yeah. Mark had where Keyless. the image was built on GitHub with like a, an identity that was provided by the GitHub platform. So you use the identity, not necessarily a key that you manage to do that. In that case, you do need to have ReCore because you have to verify things like was this temporary key that was used valid at the time that it was used. So that's when it, those pieces come in place. How does, how does, how does Conflux get that stuff? So I want to use Conflux to do a build of stuff that's on GitHub that has keys that are on GitHub. So I have to somehow feed that into Conflux. I'm guessing like a YAML file that tells it what all those pieces are. Is that right? Or? Yeah, so uh, there's different. Uh, so Conflux uses Tacton to uh, build things, right? So uh, and as part of the Tacton community, there's this project called Tacton Chains. And Tacton Chains is a, a, an operator, a controller that runs on your cluster and it's observing everything that's happening in the cluster. So when it sees a, a pipeline that's, that has built a container image, it's gonna go ahead and say, okay, I saw this image, I'm gonna sign it, and I'm gonna record everything that I saw about this. So it's easy to the developer. I don't have to know what's yeah. happening. It's all built into the uh, CI CD chain. Absolutely, yeah. So you just, you just build your thing, and then the platform takes care of it. Yeah. <laughs> I finally figured out what my first question was hard. I just realized, like, okay, why do I need policy versus just checking the signature? That's all I'm asking. Like, yeah, yeah. what does the policy get me? Like, is it is it for me or is it for the person I'm distributing software to? Like, is it so that... Is I would it, say it's mostly for you. Right? Yeah, like that's it's, what it's, I wonder. It's, it's easier to manage, like, the things you want to check. You can check things, like I said, that are yeah. not just... Well, well, but that's my key. Like, so, like, yeah, yeah. why do I want to check anything? Like, I'm not sure, yeah. like... Like, is it, like, a policy across, an, like, an enterprise? Like, literally, like, yeah, I want be, Red Hat yeah. to build everything the yeah. same? Yeah. And then just make sure everybody's not yeah, doing like, it right. Like if you have a minimum standard you want to meet, which in uh, which could be salsa, which also at some point might also become like a not just a recommendation, but like a requirement, like you know, a regulatory requirement. Meeting that and ensuring that everything meets that might be like a requirement for your builds. Yeah. So yeah. like in Fedora, we currently have two separate build systems, copper, which has very relaxed rules, and then Koji, which we have 
fairly strict rules, although those are mostly enforced by social contract rather than uh, enterprise contract. Um, but at, we, um, in order to have something in the, the distribution proper, like you have to pass a lot of really strict checks. So with this, we could use the same build system and then just have a different version of the rules you would check yeah. um, based on where what you want it to you know, go to. Like you, you know, in copper, you could allow network access while you're building yeah. or whatever. We don't care. Um, so we could have those different things, and then presumably a different release plan based on which. Yeah. So, so we're we're at time, and there's another. There's only a few minutes before the next talk, so maybe this should become a hallway conversation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Mark. you for attending. Thank you for the questions. <laughs>